I'm saying this is a <laughs> UX feedback session that we're doing today. Um, my name is Suzanne Dragacheva, and I work at Evolving Web, a Drupal agency in Montreal. I do a lot of Drupal trainings. I'm on the board of the Drupal Association. And um, in general, I love doing Drupal. I've been doing it for many years. Um, and I'll also just mention, I work with a really fun team in Montreal. So if anyone wants to move to Canada, yes, we are hiring. So for the last um, few days, I've been hanging out in the Netherlands. Um, I've done a lot of cycling here. Uh, for those of you who live here, you know, I'm very impressed with your cycling infrastructure. I have a few UX-related observations. First of all, I love the signage for cyclists. I love those little triangles that tell you who is supposed to yield to who. I've never seen this before. Uh, it's a great experience cycling around. I love the little baskets for, um, for your litter and your trash, so it really gamifies picking up garbage. I think this is a great user experience. Um, on the negative side, I'm not, still not sure what to do when I bike up to one of these buttons, and I don't know if every time I hit it, like I, I feel like I keep hitting it and nothing happens, so someone's going to have to explain this to me. Um, but overall, great UX experience um, so far. Recently, I've been doing a lot of UX work, running UX workshops with clients, um, doing research, and even doing a bit of contribution in the Drupal community, doing some um, user studies on how people use different parts of the Drupal admin UI, which has been really fun. Um, and I find that a lot of times on projects, there is no person in charge of UX. Uh, so even though UX has become more and more important over the years, I think uh, we see it more and more as a requirement for projects, it's still something that's not always um, the biggest priority. And I think sometimes it's hard for developers, you know, if we're the ones doing the build, if we're the ones working on the project, um, or if we're the UI designers and we've put already energy into a project, sometimes it's hard to listen to UX feedback and so we don't ask. So sometimes it's because we don't have time or sometimes it's because we don't have, um, you know, a budget for that. But sometimes I think those are just excuses and we just don't want to ask for the feedback. Um, and I think that part of the problem, too, is that when we ask for feedback, sometimes all we get is this like long list of things to do, and it's, it's uh, not always the most constructive or useful. Um, so what I'm going to talk to, about today is uh, actually a technique for asking for feedback and giving feedback. And I'm just going to talk about it for a short time, and then we're actually going to practice it, and we're going to give UX feedback on a couple projects a couple interfaces. Um, so this technique that I'm talking about, it's very simple. Uh, whether you're a designer, developer, project manager, or end user, whether you're the one giving feedback or the one receiving the feedback, you can use this. So you can actually use this technique in client reviews or internal demos. We actually use it as part of a regular meetup that we run where anybody can come and present an interface and get feedback on whatever they're working on. Um, so if you are interested in running similar meetups, I would love to talk to you about it and share my experiences. So these are just some photos of the, the meetups. Um, so it all starts with a demo or a walkthrough. That's kind of step, uh, step zero in the process. Um, the purpose of the demo when you're asking for feedback is to show. So if you're, if you're trying to solicit feedback from someone, I see a lot of demos where there's a lot of talking and explaining going on. Um, and when you're asking for feedback, it's better to show what you're working on and not taking time to explain or kind of defend. And a lot of times when you're a developer presenting something you've worked on, you've already put a lot of time into it. So the, the, the instinct is to say, oh, yeah, but it's not quite finished yet, or yeah, like it's supposed to work like this. Um, it's better to set the scene by talking about maybe what the user is trying to achieve with your interface um, to give that context. Um, but long explanations and narratives tend to kind of bias the type of feedback you get. 
Then after the demo, when people are actually giving the feedback, I find it really useful to give this feedback in three rounds. So step two is after the demo, the feedback givers, the audience, today that's going to be all of you, uh, you start with a round of descriptive keywords. And this is the part that people usually leave out. This is really key to set the scene. So when, you're, when you first see an interface, you know, you're, you're brand new, you're having an experience for the first time, before you start giving positive feedback or negative feedback, uh, before you start using a lot of adjectives to describe what you see, um, it's really useful to take this time to just give um, a neutral kind of description, a few words that describe what you've seen. Um, and the purpose is that it helps us as the audience kind of understand what we've seen um, without jumping into those positives and negatives and really set the scene, set the context. Um, it helps us put ourselves into the shoes of the user. So think about that. So if you're, if you're working on a project, you know, your developers, the developer's presenting something, you're trying to give feedback, think first about like what, what is this interface for? Let's, just, let's try and describe it before we start criticizing or praising. So the next phase is the easy one, positive feedback. It's fun to give positive feedback. This seems like kind of an obvious one, but the truth is that it's really important to take time to give positive feedback first. As soon as you've given a, a significant amount of positive feedback, you feel much more um, comfortable giving the critical feedback, the negative feedback, the more useful kind of questioning and um, poking at things. Um, so positive feedback first is super important. Um, it's also good to get those thoughts flowing about an interface, so taking that time to give positive feedback, um, getting more enthusiasm. And then, of course, whoever is presenting this interface um, needs to hear that positive feedback, too, because they put a lot of work in. They need, they need that um, positive reinforcement to keep their energy going. And then the last step, this is the really valuable step, the critical feedback. So critical feedback can take many forms. So it's not just saying, I don't like this, this doesn't work, this sucks. <laughs> we, don't, we don't have to just say critical feedback in this way. A lot of critical feedback can be pulling in examples from other interfaces. Um, we can ask questions. So one of the best forms of critical feedback is somebody demos a product or an interface to you and you ask them questions like, oh, is it supposed to do this? Or does it work like that? Um, or did you, did you think about adding this feature? Um, asking those questions can be the most useful thing. And unlike user testing, where um, all the feedback you're collecting, it sort of feels more scientific with user testing. You know, you're testing with actual real users. Um, in, a, in a feedback session like this, where you're getting feedback maybe from your peers, uh, your colleagues, or just random people that gathered in a room to see an interface, um, the people giving the feedback aren't necessarily your users, and they haven't used the interface necessarily themselves. They're watching a demo. So all the critical feedback you take, if you're, if you're the one collecting the feedback, you have to take it all with a, a big grain of salt and put it through the filter of, does this actually, is, are these criticisms, are these suggestions actually going to help my users? Um, and so the most important thing for the feedback taker to do is to actually take notes and listen. So that's the, this is the hardest part. So if you're implementing this kind of feedback technique and you're asking for feedback in this way, a lot of times when you're doing this demo, um, it becomes a conversation where you ask for feedback, people say, oh, I don't like this, you should change that color. This is not accessible, and it becomes a debate or a, an argument or a conversation. And it's much more useful to just listen to all the feedback, record it all, and then go through it in a rational way and kind of see, does this make sense for my product? Does this make sense for my users? What is the most important feedback to implement? Okay, so demo time. So I promised a UX feedback uh, session. So we're gonna do two demos. I'm gonna start um, with one where I'm actually gonna do a, a demo of an interface that um, 
you might have seen before, <laughs> you might have some feedback on. Um, and then uh, Sasha is going to come up and do a second demo. So we have, I hope, time uh, for two demos today. And then if you want, you can give feedback on this feedback session, which is going to be super meta. OK. So usually I get other people up here to do the demos, but um, I had a lack of volunteers today, so I'm doing this demo myself. OK, so probably most of you have been to Drupal.org, but I'm guessing that a lot of you have never been to the community section. Community section is a relatively new section of Drupal.org, um, and its audience is new users, people who are maybe new to the community, uh, they're new to Drupal, and maybe they're looking for help or support, and they've heard that Drupal, like you come for the code, stay for the community. So they've come to this page. Um, and maybe I'm someone in the community, and I'm looking for, um, I'm looking for help with a problem. Like I've started to install and use Drupal, but I'm having trouble learning it on my own, and I'm trying to get over that famous Drupal learning curve. So I come here. I see there's community groups. I look around, trying to figure out some of the terminology. Maybe I think, oh yeah, like an event could be useful. Nonprofit Drupal, maybe my website is for a nonprofit organization, so maybe I'm gonna start looking at that link. If I open it up. Oh, it kind of takes me to this other section. So I keep scrolling down the page. I want help installing Drupal. There's a lot of links here. I want to connect with members of the Drupal community. That seems kind of relevant to what I want to do. And I keep scrolling down and can't find what you're looking for. <laughs> so maybe that's me. It's more links. So I see some recent posts, so maybe that's going to be interesting to help me kind of get some context for what this is for. And then there's other, other blogs and things. So maybe I'll open up the community blog and start to read, read through that. OK, so I'm looking for more information about some specific way to get involved. And I think the most relevant thing is probably this section here. I want to connect with members of the Drupal community. So I start to dig into these links. So that's, so that's the demo. <laughs> um, so then um, it's useful when you're doing a demo to actually ask for the specific feedback that you want, maybe, like what aspects of this interface could use the most input. Um, so I think there's clearly like a lot of links here. So I want feedback on what content do you think would be most useful to the users of this page um, and how, like, how that content could be maybe better prioritized. Any, any input on how this could be better um, or what could be valuable here would be useful. Okay, so I've got these two boxes, which are apparently microphones. So if you're lucky enough to be down on the ground floor, uh, you can grab a microphone. And the first round of feedback that we're going to give on this community page is about um, just what you saw. So neutral words to describe what I've just demoed. So who wants to start? Hands up. Can I speak to this? OK, so I saw a list of various groups of people, like, like kind of an, how the community is organized in different ways. And uh, I also saw some, like, 
Q&A type of uh, details elements or accordion to answer like probably most common questions of like for people who are looking for ways to contribute or participate in the community. Okay. Well. Okay, great. Who who else? You did too good a job. Oh, <laughs> there's someone. Part of, uh, he said, I, I saw a lot of links and a lot of text. Anyone else? Yes. Here. I, I think I saw you were unsure what you're looking for. Anything else? Keywords you would use to describe this page. If, yes, over there. Ah, okay, if you're not familiar, that's hard to understand what it means. So that's starting to get into negative feedback. <laughs> so once you hear some negative feedback, you know, it's a sign that maybe, maybe it's been well described. So we saw, we heard, you know, in terms of the first round of feedback, there's a lot of links, uh, a lot of information, it's something for the community. Um, okay, so let's move on actually to the positive feedback. So what do we like about this? page what are positive things what are things that you think this does what this interface does well hi I like that you were talking to the user like find your place you know so the language was direct to them else? other positive feedback hands up yes Laura. so I like the fact that there was kind of call to action if you didn't find out what you wanted so there was a way to provide feedback and ask questions in the end. Mm -hmm. Joseph? I like, the, I think I saw the, the sections that described like what I'm looking for in a certain situation. So I think it's helpful that I kind of read uh, the context where I'm, where I'm in myself. So yeah, like I want to help get help installing Drupal, or I want to contribute, so it it's kind of directly speaks to myself. Okay, so from the first person, that's great. Okay, we need a couple more positive feedback. Who else hasn't spoken yet? There in the green. It doesn't get very technical when you get on the website. It isn't solely for developers, it's also for other people. So if you go a little bit up, you'll see other communities you can participate in. It's not only for developers. Yes, in the front row. Yes. Um, I like that you could uh, flip uh, open and close the boxes so you don't go to another page and then on, and to another page, so you stay on the same page. Anything else? Hands way, I can't see super well. Put your hands way up. Yes, over here. Um, I, from a content standpoint, I like that when you click on community in the navigation, you come to the page and it states right at the top what the philosophy is of the community. And then quickly you see the different community groups. And if they're not, if there's not something there that you want, you can go to groups Drupal org. So I think as a user from the navigation standpoint, this is delivering on what I would expect to see from the navigation. Okay, great. So I can tell everyone's bursting with critical feedback that they want to unleash. So that's the whole point. Uh, so now we can open it up to um, questions, um, suggestions, critical feedback, things that you wish um, could be better. 
and I'm going to take notes and watch the recording later. Yes. Okay. Sorry for my English. Uh, can you please scroll down to find your place? Okay, so uh, I'd like if you open one group, open please, yes, and open another group. So I'd like if you open one, the, we close the, which is opened before, which was opened before. Great, George. It'd be cool if it had a, uh, like a contextual search at the top. I want to dot, 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 you type it in and it would just bring you to where it was. Plus there's a reference to groups.drupal.org and I'm not exactly sure how current that is, if anyone still uses that or not. That's very positive negative feedback, George. <laughs> anyone else? Yes, Laurie. Just kind of thinking of myself when I started con contributing to something and if I would have seen this as the first thing, I don't, I don't really know if it would have helped me in any way to participate because of like, I don't think any of these things really was what I wanted to do. I kind of just wanted to go to an event and like learn about Drupal more. Like I would feel that there's a lot of information being given to me that I don't know what it means. Like for example, the first group that I see is community working group. It's like, what is that? Is that something I have to know about? And if I'm really new to the community, maybe it's not really something you have to understand at that point as the first thing. So I feel like that there's probably, like I feel like this is structured in a way, which is like the way that people who are very familiar with the community would think about this rather than from the point of view of someone who is really new to the community and just have to learn the very basics at first. So I think there's a lot of great information here, but I think just the, the audience is probably a little bit different than what we are targeting here. I would say if um, the user isn't a technical person, um, they could use something that was maybe used on commercial sites like for feedback, um, like some sort of dialogue box, like a chat box, where you can leave a question. If you don't find what you're looking for on that page, you know, just give your email address and a question, and somebody can uh, somebody can get back to you later on. There's no interaction with the the person coming to the page, not immediate anyway. Hmm. I mean, it's similar to your search thing, right? You know, what are you doing on the page, like search for or something like that. Uh, Philippe. Um, well, the, there's a lot of text on there, but the problem is that I can't build a mental model how it's actually organized. So there's a community behind Drupal, when I'm new to them. I don't even know that. So I need to have like uh, an image or something how to, to visualize what actually happens here. So that would be, this one would be the next, the next page for me as a new one. Um, I, I do like the text itself. I do like the content which is on there, which makes a lot of sense for given that you're a Drupal person already. You see that it's up to date, you see um, that there is like Slack mentioned and so forth, you have the Stack Exchange things, everything is fine. But for somebody who's coming new to this and want to, wants to get in, evol involved with the community, it would probably make more sense to have like the next most recent event that is coming up, like a DrupalCon, like a camp, like something close to you, or what's, what's like the fastest way to get in contact? And there would be something like a chat to open up direct directly and just not like force people into some sign up ways or force them to figure out where they have to go for themselves. Great, okay. Um, one more feedback right there, just behind you. <laughs> yeah. um, there's a lot of text on the page which is it's like, okay, because that's what it's meant to do, but I think the line length is quite long. Like, I found my eyes were zigzagging quite a lot to read it because it was taking up the full width of the page. So a, a max width from, like, the paragraph or something would make the line length more comfortable and maybe encourage people to actually read everything on there rather than get tired. Okay, amazing. Thank you for all the feedback. That's super useful. We'll give yourselves a round of applause.
You just did some great consulting work there for the Drupal Association, uh, maybe. Um, okay, so we're gonna do second demo. You wanna come up here, Sasha? So next demo, Sasha's gonna show us some work that he's been doing. Yes, so I wanted to share with you some of the work we did um, on the admin UI. Um, so basically beyond Clara, we are also working on new stuff. Um, my name is Sascha Eckenberger. I work on the Drupal admin UI and JavaScript modernization initiative. And in the past couple of weeks, I started to basically on wireframes or, well, there are more than wireframes now, but uh, just like, what will be next for the admin UI beyond Claro, basically? Um, so there's a big warning on that. Um, so the screens I will show you now, uh, basically just a handful of people have seen them. So um, n not a lot uh, part of the community has seen this. So basically, I think it's less than five people. Um, so this is really, really um, highly work in progress. So basically, th these are things we came along when we designed Claro, um, things we had in mind or things we want to change for the future. And um, I quickly want to show you one of the screens and give like, or getting like feedback, a first feedback on what you think about it. Um, so just to give you like a quick intro, um, why I want to show you this. Um, so basically, this is how the layout currently looks like. Um, so this is a stripped down or like a wireframe of Claro. Um, we have all the regions as you know them. So we have um, like the settings and the node form, and we have a toolbar and everything here. But when we design Claro, basically we restricted ourselves to taking seven and make it more like more uh, like a refresh with the newly crafted design system. But we won't stop there. So basically we want to do um, a lot of more changes in the future. And for that we need to change um, the layout a bit. So basically this is where this comes in. Um, so we have, um, or potentially could have a new, a new toolbar and the toolbar lives on the left side on the screen or on the right side if you're an RTL user. Um, so this would be the toolbar on the left. Um, then we have a new sidebar region because there isn't any sidebar region now. So we would have to create that. Um, this would be for settings, but uh, currently we only have like this settings sidebar, but it's not a real one uh, in the node edit form but this could also be potentially be used in other regions um, throughout the UI in, in general. Um, so this would be the sidebar on the right. And one thing um, Christina and I came uh, around quite a lot is, and like one of the things I struggle the most with in Drupal is the save button in the no node edit form. So basically, if you use the node editing form with paragraphs and you have them all expanded, you always have to scroll a lot um, or like a very long time until you reach the save button and you can save your change. But maybe your change is at, you know, like the first two content pieces. Um, so this would be like a proposal to have like a sticky bar where you, you could have like a basically like a call to action, uh, which could also be always in the context um, of your UI you're, you're looking at. So in this example, like a save button, so you always have it on hand to do your action. And I just did quickly, uh, basically like adapting the design system we crafted into the wireframes you, you saw. So. Um, this was done like in the last couple of days just to show you basically how this potentially could look like. And um, I'm really looking forward to your feedback, as I said. So um, almost ne nobody saw this yet. So it's, it's really like you're the first one um, who see this. And I think we also have a lot of things in mind which isn't showcased yet on this uh, particular 
design, and um, also um, there is a lot of work to be done. And yeah, I'm just looking forward for your feedback. And the, the second part of the feedback, uh, which would be really valuable for us, would also be what are the most pain points for you in the current UI? So basically that we can uh, gather all the feedback of what's your pain point with the current UI that we can basically improve these parts as well for the next generation UI. Okay, thank you, great. Should I stay here or? Yeah, yeah, stay here. Okay, so Sasha's gonna stay here while we give feedback. I guess the cubes are still out there. So the first thing we need is a summary of what we just saw. Where are the cubes? So, uh, yeah, we saw a general admin uh, UI that's pretty recognizable these days. Uh, oh, sorry, is it uh, hearable? Um, so you have the uh, standard sidebar uh, that you see a lot. Um, general descriptions, I'm trying to think of more. There of were them. some more hands down here. Oh. Do you want to toss the ball down? I saw a transformation from a wireframe to a change depicted in the actual uh, edit screen of moving the save button from the far right corner to closer to the edit space. <laughs> <laughs> it's very precise. Good eye. Isabel. Hi. For me, it looks familiar, like if you already use it Drupal, you will not get lost. But the changes that I see is like, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> like, we miss it that point. Maybe there are, I mean, it's not a big change, but they are very useful, I think. Okay, any other descriptors? Yes? I, I see clearly uh, admin uh, toolbar, uh, uh, first edit uh, section and the secondary edit st section and a call to action. Edit second, call to action, yeah. I could also see that their toolbar on the left side is expandable and collapsible, and there's a more action select link on the right side of, right, top right side of the uh, page, and there's presumably a more link next to that. Okay, let's go to some positive feedback. What do you like about what you see? I want some new new people who hasn't said anything yet. Actually, it's, uh, uh, it, there uh, will be positive and uh, suggest one, one suggest. Uh, Just yeah, stick yeah, to I, the positive I, 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 for I, now. I, you can come back to the negative I, later. I, I, I just suggest, not, not negative. Uh, Okay, okay. So I really like uh, the position of save uh, button because yes, I'm re really hating <laughs> where it, it is now, but uh, this I really like, so. Awesome, who else? Uh, right there behind you, some. It's a clean design and uh, more modern. Um, you have a very clear separation of concerns, so it's very clear what part is for actions, what part is content editing, what part is saving. So I like that it's very structured and very clear, uh, that separation of how to use it. Over here in the blue. Oh. Uh, you got a nice reorganization of elements that are needed and the bringing out of elements, uh, you know, bringing them up out of the depths, so to speak, you know, the, the save button and the preview button and the publish uh, is a nice reorganization without completely estranging what came before. <clears throat> Antonella? Oh, no, I was just handling the ball. Oh, you are, okay. <laughs> Who else has got positive feedback? Oh, way back there. Someone can throw that far? 
I just wanted to say I, I really like it. I think it's a really customer-facing initiative here as well. And we can see, I mean, the example Sasha just showed us is something uh, that I can imagine that uh, some of the editors really struggle and that's just a really positive thing. So overall, I really like it. Thanks you. Okay, we're ready. So more critical feedback suggestions. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Okay. You, you, you can do your, you can, it was mid throw, so I think Laurie can give us positive feedback first, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so something that I like is that the layers are very clearly visible, which also helps separate the different groups of things. So for example, uh, the, the content on the left is one to one layer, and we could have additional layers on that uh, region as well. Layers. Okay, kick off the, the criticisms and the suggestions. We want to hear them. Oh, uh, yes, if we are talking not uh, just about save uh, and preview buttons, uh, actually, I am really hate uh, the, the sidebar with settings, menus, settings, you understand. Uh, it's really too difficult to me to find uh, some fields uh, there. And, uh, Actually, uh, in shock when uh, they appear in uh, me meta text with, with one million buttons. So my suggestion is uh, to put uh, search button, uh, search field, uh, like we have on uh, filter field, uh, like we have on uh, models uh, or user permissions. So. It, to, to help, to it will help to find uh, information, uh, few fields we re really need. Okay, edit. a filter for finding the fields. Yes. Okay, great. Uh, in the red back there. Okay, so this all looks great, but one, one of the first things uh, is like, um, I think it's not too brave, maybe, because it all looks familiar, but as the one guy said, uh, the settings sidebar, I don't think uh, we are using it every time we uh, edit a node. So maybe it could be like uh, collapsible with some button uh, on the top bar. And the top bar looks uh, great. It would be great if we could add some field over there like in content moderation, we have some state of the node uh, published. So if we would have that possibility to add the, some field there, it would be great. Yeah, thank you. Okay, people next to you. Somebody, somebody who hasn't said something yet. Well, I've said something positive before, <laughs> so <laughs> something negative. Um, but not necessarily negative, but it's it's a lot like WordPress. So what we've been saying, some people, it's it's uh, it's very familiar, which is not a bad thing. But WordPress is very simple, and Drupal backend is very complex. So what I'm not seeing in here is the central con uh, bit with the content. This is very simple, but I have maybe in my career of 13 years maybe seen four sites that are this simple. So the center part, I'm not seeing a way to group content or to handle different kinds of fields, it's just one content field, but that never happens with the central part of a Drupal site. So, and that's, I think that's the most important part you need to focus on, and the filtering is one way to solve it. But yeah, the middle part is the more, most complex part of it, and that uh, gets the least attention in this wireframe. Okay, um, a couple more people. I wouldn't put a view and a preview option on the same page. They seem kind of redundant. I really think that delete should be a button and not a, a tab, and that somehow renders the whole bar um, optional. Okay, and uh, I think we have time for very two very quick comments. Um, to me, it's not clear if you change the published um, field, whether it happened immediately or you need to save 
after. Ah, because okay. I think the grouping in that top bar, obviously save and preview will happen immediately. So you think publish would as well, but does it? I don't know. Anyway. And uh, in red, the I don't see you are. Yeah. Um, I also saw it when I saw it about the WordPress. I think it looks too too similar. I would do something more unique, something more um, or yeah, something uh, not a clone. And uh, the save and the preview as well in the above. I also I found it a bit strange because. I don't know, I think it's a, it's a bit weird save and then you put the da data. So I think I would put it down after the field. Okay, thanks everyone for your feedback. That was great. And I see a team of people here who have been contributing to this. So I'm sure your feedback was very helpful. Um, and yes, if you wanna contribute more, People should come, right? Yes, just a side note. So um, this was just one screen. We have more to share. Um, come on Wednesday, 9 a.m. in room G103. So thank you. Super. And um, thanks, everyone, for coming today. I hope this was helpful. I hope you can take this and go implement something similar in your own UX processes. And if you want to talk more about UX with me and get ideas for, your, for your, uh, starting a meetup like this, come uh, talk to me. I'd love to chat. That was a bit not so well prepared, but I just put a bunch of stuff together. Like.